If you've never seen this uh, channel before, this, this channel is dedicated to you, the viewer. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I am a 46-year-old dad of four. I was an absolute train wreck um, as a teenager um, and actually dealt with quite a few issues as an adult, um, but was able to overcome my circumstance and um, arrive at a place that I never would have expected for myself to arrive. Um, and so, look, I'm going to tell you right now, if, if some kid who's an absolute train wreck is able to stumble his way through life and, and get somewhere that's really good, so can you. So can you. So we're here, I'm here to hopefully inspire you, to motivate you to be more than what you think you can be. And that, by the way, is the first step. Right? So we have four principles of success here. The first one is to dream your dream. What is your dream? Now, when we say when we say your dream, we don't mean wish, right? A dream means that's where I want to get, and I'm trying to think of ways to get there, right? A wish means where's the genie and just give it to me. See the difference? So we're not interested in wishes here on this channel. We are interested in dreams. And dream a little bit bigger than you think you should and then follow our rules once you know what your goal in life is rule one number one is figure out what your dream is and then research the steps necessary to get there during that process you're gonna find your obstacles the things that you have to overcome to get to your dream fear is only beneficial in determining whether your dream is actually what you want in life if it's not worth it to you find a new dream All right if you're not willing to jump through those hoops not because you're scared, but because it's just not worth it. Then find another dream. But if you are stopping yourself because you know you want it, but you're just scared to try because you're afraid of failing or you're, you're afraid of a temporary defeat or that it might take years and years and years, you can't do that. Fear, so rule number two is we can never allow fear to be the determining factor in any of our decisions in pursuing our dream. We can't, or we won't get there. And yes, that means we have to take an, an immense amount of risk at some point, right? Lay it all down on the line. And number three, we must be willing to make the appropriate sacrifices to achieve the dream. And those sacrifices can be very, very heavy. Okay. And then finally, number four, never give up. It is acceptable to have a defeat. Defeats are temporary in nature, and there's usually a learning lesson from them. Failure is not acceptable. Failure means we give up. It's a final give up. I'm not going to pursue my dream anymore. I'm walking away. That's, we don't believe in that here on this channel. Not if you want to be successful. So those are our four principles of success. We're going to go ahead and uh, jump into our quote of the day. We'll then jump into our spiritual reading. Um, we will go into our money or our wealth principle for the day. We will then jump into our Japanese learning to illustrate our four points of success. And then we'll see where the day takes us because I have a little bit of an open calendar this morning. So that's good news. All right. So our music's still going. Yay. Okay. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are interested, I do have a Discord that I've got set up. Uh, as you, uh, I think what we're going to do is, is for those who have been following me for the past several months, you guys get an auto entry. Everybody else has to be a subscriber if you're new. So if you'd like to join that, go ahead and subscribe. Just remember. All, any and all donations or subscription uh, money goes straight to Operation Underground Railroad to stop human trafficking, specifically child sex trafficking. Okay. <clears throat> this is a, a very important principle that I'm about to share with you from Napoleon Hill. The quote today is, Wise men, when in doubt whether to speak or to keep quiet, 
give themselves the benefit of the doubt and remain silent. I'm going to read that again. Wise men, when in doubt whether to speak or to keep quiet, give themselves the benefit of the doubt and remain silent. Let's go ahead and put that on our tweet. If you go to our Twitter, can I find the, the Twitter? Yes, no, maybe. No, all right, we'll, we'll just go there anyway. Let's pull this one over here. Twitter. See, here's the thing. The human, the human mind is actually quite interesting. Um, we, we tend, the human mind does not like voids. It does not like the unknown. And so, um, when, when meeting somebody new, if that new person winds up asking you about yourself and really not talking much about themselves or giving their opinion on anything, do you know what your mind does automatically? It actually assumes that they believe the same thing you do. That's what your mind does. And then guess what? If you think somebody's just like you, do you like them? Of course you do. <laughs> so actually, when you're in a, in a new group for the first time, it is a very useful idea. This concept is to remain silent and ask other people questions and ask other people about their opinions and keep your opinion to yourself unless asked, right? Um, so again, when in, wise men, when in doubt whether to speak or to keep quiet, give themselves, whoop, give themselves the benefit of the doubt and remain silent. I need to put quotes around that. So if you guys go to twitter.com slash Occam, A-K-H, the number 4M, and you follow me, you will get the quote of the day tweeted out to you. So if you can't get, catch the stream or you don't go to the YouTube channel, YouTube channel I will give you here in a second because I do upload the videos when we're done with them, um, you can always get the tweet and at least get the, the thought of the day. Okay, but, uh, but by the way, the other reason that you don't want to, that wise people keep their mouths shut is if they're not sure that their contribution is accurate or useful or beneficial, um, they mitigate the possible damage that they do to themselves by, by speaking out of turn, right? Meaning speaking up and then being wrong. Now, what's amazing is if you make your statement in such a way that you say, I think it's like this, but I'm not sure, you allow you allow yourself to be wrong in your statement, that's okay. In fact, most pe people appreciate that. And then if you get correct, you say, oh, okay, well, that makes total sense, right? You fully accept that you were wrong and move on. People like you even more, right? So there is a lot of wisdom to this. And there's a lot of wisdom to, to accepting the idea that we don't know everything and that we, we're always in the position to be ready to learn. And also to laugh at ourselves when, we're when we should have been right and we were completely wrong to say, yep, that's my bad. I should have known that, my fault. Take ownership. People truly appreciate that. Okay, that was our quote from Napoleon Hill. Wise men, when in doubt whether to speak or to keep quiet, give themselves the benefit of the doubt and remain silent. It's a good quote for today. All right, let's go ahead and, and set our timer. We're going to go uh, 10 minutes today in reading. Uh, we are reading uh, a historical record, which is spiritual in nature. Uh, again, having grown up overseas in the Philippines and Singapore, I realized that we don't all believe exactly the same, uh, nor do we need to, okay? Um, there is value 
let's see, it's 8.20, so it'll be about 8.30, right? There is value, hello? There we go. There's value in, um, in just learning. If there is something that is inspiring to you from my reading, whether you believe as these people believe or as I believe or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you get something out of it and it brings you inspiration or motivation or clarity in some aspect of your life, then I think that's beneficial and we all win. Okay? So this is very religious. It is based on Christ. But I understand not everybody believes like me and that's okay. And you don't have to. All right, let's go ahead and start our timer. There it is. Perfect. And it came to pass that after we had gone, come down into the wilderness unto our father, behold, he was filled with joy. And also my mother Sariah was exceedingly glad, for she truly had mourned because of us. For she had supposed that we had perished in the wilderness. And she had also complained against my father, telling him that he was a visionary man saying, Behold, thou hast led us forth from the land of our inheritance, and my sons are no more, and we perish in the wilderness. And after this manner of language had my mother complained against my father. All right, let's, let's talk about that for just a second. The, the whole idea of being a prophet or a person who receives communication from deity, whoever you believe deity, deity to be, is extremely an extremely difficult position to be in. You know, we look at prophets like Moses, Elijah, um, wh whomever you whomever you think, and we think, "Wow, those guys were just so amazing!" And da 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 da, right? We forget their humanity. Remember, Moses had Jethro. If you don't know who Jethro is, that is his father-in-law. Moses was constantly turning to Jethro, saying, "What am I supposed to do?" And Jethro was scolding him, saying, "Dude, you're the leader." Like, you, you talk to God, would you, would you please step up? <laughs> I mean, obviously not in those words. But he was not self-confident in any way. And Moses, by the way, a prince of Egypt. Right? He was not confident. He was extremely reluctant. And in this case with Lehi, at this point, there's only two people, really, who are on board with what Lehi is doing. Remember, Lehi had a vision. He had a dream. He had to get out of Jerusalem because Babylon was going to invade and destroy Jerusalem. And by the way, that is exactly what happened. This is around 600 BC. Okay? So God tells Lehi in a dream, get out, take your family, take food, and leave. Leave your gold, leave your silver, leave your home, leave everything. And he was a very extremely wealthy man. He was highly influential in Jerusalem. Right? Boom, get out. So at this point in time, there's only two people who are really behind Lehi. Lehi. <laughs> and Nephi. And the only reason Nephi is behind Lehi is because he actually prayed himself and got confirmation that that's what they're supposed to do. Otherwise, Nephi would have rebelled just like his older brothers. And now we see that his wife, Sariah, was literally browbeating him. Literally, because he had received another revelation telling his sons to go get the brass plates that not only contained the scriptures, uh, what we would call today the Torah, right? Uh, but it also contained a genealogy of their people. So Sarai is not happy with Lehi, and she is just tongue lashing him. Okay? But now her sons return home safe. So as a mother does, right, what is she worried about? They, they, they have to go back to Jerusalem. It's like a three weeks journey, right, each way. So can they make it across the desert? Then can they get the plates or are they going to be killed by Laban? Then can they make it back? Like she's terrified. She is ticked. And, as, and she's, letting, she's letting Lehi have it. All right. And it had come to pass that my father spake unto her, saying, I know that I am a visionary man, for if I had not seen the things of God in a vision, I should not have known the goodness of God, but had tarried at Jerusalem and had perished with my brethren. But behold, I have obtained a land of promise, in the which things I do rejoice. Yea, and I know that the Lord will deliver my sons out of the hands of Laban, 
and bring them down again unto us in the wilderness. And after this manner of language did my father Lehi comfort my mother Sariah concerning us while we journeyed in the wilderness up to the land of Jerusalem to attain the record of the Jews. So it's very interesting again, because if somebody's browbeating you, what's our natural reaction? We get angry too, right? And we start yelling. No, not here. No, he simply confirms what she says. You say, I'm a visionary man. You are correct. He says, I've been, I've been promised a land of inheritance, a land of promise. That's why we're away from Jerusalem. And I believe and I have faith that God will return my sons to me and to you. That is quite remarkable, right? What, what an exercise of faith for both parents. But Lehi is just standing firm. But make no mistake about it. I am pretty darn sure that somewhere along the way, he's probably on his knees saying, please, please, please let them come back. <laughs> right? Do not let this go wrong. All right. And when we had returned to the tent of my father, behold, their joy was full and my mother was comforted. And she spake saying, now I know of a surety that the Lord has commanded my husband to flee into the wilderness. Yet I also know of a surety that the Lord has protected my sons and delivered them out of the hands of Laban and given them power whereby they could accomplish the things which the Lord has commanded them to do. And after this manner of language did she speak. So listen, they've been, they've now let, they've been out of Jerusalem for several months. Months! And it is only now. Now? that Sariah believes that, they're where, that they are where they're supposed to be and that God is leading them? I mean, think about it. Up to that point, she thought her husband was a freaking nutcase, right? That's what she's thinking until that moment. Now, to her credit, she recognized it because as we will see, Laman and Lemuel, who saw an angel still didn't believe. And they never will, by the way, believe. So to, to, to Soraya's credit, for as much as she was browbeating her husband, when, when Heavenly Father protected her children and brought them back home as promised, she immediately recognized the hand of the Lord and was thankful for it and acknowledged that <clears throat> Lehi was indeed a prophet. So good for her. And it came to pass that they did re rejoice exceedingly and did offer sacrifice and burnt offerings unto the Lord. And they gave thanks unto the God of Israel. Remember, sacrifices and burnt offerings are for repentance. It is a symbol um, of what is to come and the symbol of the ultimate sacrifice, which is, of course, Christ. And after they had given thanks unto the God of Israel, my father Lehi took the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass, and he did search them from the beginning. And he beheld that they did contain the five books of Moses. Right? So, what are the five books of Moses? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Right? Those are the five books. And the... The idea here is that most of those books, or at least Genesis anyway, was dictated to Moses by Jehovah or Jesus Christ. All right. And Jehovah then passes the knowledge of the creation of the world, our parents, Adam and Eve, the relationship between agency uh, and our brother Lucifer who absolutely is our brother and he's ticked off at us unfortunately and uh, kind of sets the, the tone for why we are where we are today and how things operate and who has the power of what right if you if you read it carefully all right so the five books of Moses Gives an account of the creation of the world and also Adam and Eve, who were our first parents. Oh, dang it, I just said that. Uh, and also a record of the Jews from the beginning, even down to the commencement of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. All right, remember that 
once the house of Israel settled in the land of promise, that the kingdoms were split into two, right? You have the northern kingdom and then you have the kingdom of Judah, right? So what this is saying is that upon splitting, this record focuses only on the kingdom of Judah. And therefore, by definition, Lehi and his family are Jews, okay? And also, also the prophecies of the holy prophets from the beginning, even down to the commencement of the reign of Zedekiah. If you do your homework, you will find that Zedekiah actually was the king of Judah around 600 BC. Okay. And also many prophecies which have been spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah. And it came A to wizard that... is never late, oh. Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thank you, Gandalf. It means I took way too long <laughs> reading this chapter, but we're going to finish it so I don't leave you hanging. And it came to pass that my father Lehi also found upon the, black, uh, the plates of brass a genealogy of his father's. Wherefore, he knew that he was a descendant of Joseph, yea, even that Joseph who was the son of Jacob, who was sold into Egypt and who was preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he might preserve his father Jacob and all his household from perishing with famine. And they were also led out of captivity and out of the land of Egypt by that same God who had preserved them. And thus my father Lehi did discover the genealogy of his fathers. And Laban also was a descendant of Joseph, wherefore he and his fathers had kept the records. All right, so they were obviously related. And now when my father saw all these things, he was filled with the Spirit and began to prophesy concerning his seed that the plates of brass should go forth unto all nations kindreds, tongues, and people who were of his seed. Wherefore, he said that these plates of brass should never perish, neither should they be dimmed any more by time. And he prophesied many things concerning his seed. And it came to pass that thus far I and my father had kept the commandments wherewith the Lord had commanded us. And we obtained the records of the Lord had commanded us and searched them and found that they were desirable. Yea, even of great worth unto us, insomuch that we could preserve the commandments of the Lord unto our children. Wherefore, it was wisdom in the Lord that we should carry them with us as we journeyed in the wilderness towards the land of promise. And by the way, that, that prophecy of that record uh, dropping down to all kindreds and tongues is now fulfilled. We are actually reading it right and we're, we're reading it in English this has been translated into like tons of languages um, not all of them but uh, it's getting there and so that that prophecy actually did come to pass very interesting uh, let's close down our timer and let's go into our principle of wealth for the day if you've just joined us welcome and good morning We've done our um, inspirational quote for the day. We've done our spiritual reading. Uh, we're now going into Money Monday, and, and this is a small wealth principle that I share with you. I am a so-called expert in this field, I guess you could say. Um, and so I just share it with you, a food for thought. And today's, today's uh, m uh, money principle comes from... Um, uh, a man who I think is quite fascinating, um, actually. His story is, you, you really need to read his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the name of, of his book, and that's where this quote is coming from. Okay, um, I think you can find Rich Dad, Poor Dad just about anywhere. Right? Yeah, you can. So, Richard, or Robert, excuse me, Robert Kiyosaki 
uh, wrote the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. I've read it a couple of times. Um, and, and there's a principle that he shares that I absolutely believe is true. Although it's a principle that I didn't understand at first. He says, in order to make money, you have to spend money. Now, it doesn't seem to make much sense, does it? How in the world are you going to make money if you're spending it? Well, my dear friends, let me give you um, a surprising example, perhaps. So, if you are going to college or plan to go to college, guess what you're doing? You're spending money in order to make money. Think about it. You are paying the college tuition, you're paying to live there, you're paying to eat, and you're doing this for four or five years. In fact, you're spending quite a lot of money. And in return, you are gaining the knowledge necessary to become an employee, correct? And by becoming an expert or not an expert, well, I guess you could say an expert. Usually when you graduate from college, you, you know more about your field than most people across the nation, right? So we'll, we'll call you an expert. You, you graduate being an expert in your field and you're then employable in that field. You may, may not be a master of that field, but you're certainly more knowledgeable than most of the people in, uh, in the world about that topic. And then you will be compensated for that knowledge and the application of that knowledge, correct? So if I'm a doctor, or am I a surgeon, uh, I might be a half million dollars in debt because I've gone through 12 to 15 years of school, right? But because of that, I have knowledge that most people do not have and I can now charge quite a substantial sum for my services, correct? So the idea is to make money, you gotta spend money. Let's look at this from a business application, okay? Let's, let's start small, okay? If I want to start a, and by the way, I, I, know, I know a person who actually makes about 100,000 a year doing this, so don't laugh. If you wanna start a business scooping dog poop in your neighborhood, um, what do you have to do, right? Well, you gotta put money into it. Uh, so you've gotta buy your equipment, which isn't gonna be too much, but some kind of dog pooper scooper, right? You're gonna have to buy poop bags. And then probably most importantly, you've gotta figure a way to, to get the word out in the neighborhood that you're doing this. And if you would like an idea for free, cause I, I, love, I love success, right? I, I don't, I don't think that success should be hoarded, right? We can all be successful and sharing knowledge helps. So if what, what, uh, what this gentleman did is he went to his sister who was nine years old. <laughs> I just chuckled. And he, he had her draw in crayon um, a picture that, that said, um, I can scoop your dog's poop for whatever it was, $20 a month, whatever it was. And, and the, in you know, please call this number or text this number to start the process. Well, he was older. He was like 16, 17, right? And so because people are like, well, well this is a kid, they would text the number. He would make the arrangement, send them an agreement, and then they would pay him Electronically, he grew this business to the point where he's making a hundred thousand a year just scooping dog poop, guys. Right? So who cares? I don't care that he's scooping dog poop. It's a, it's an it's a it's an American success story. It's quite amazing. And trust me, nobody wants to scoop their dog poop. Right? There's plenty of people willing to pay some some kid to do it. Right? The point is, even with something as small as a dog poop scooping business. Yeah, say that fast 10 times. Um, 
there's got to be an expense. You've got to spend money first in order to make money. In this case, it's the equipment and the advertising. The cost of making copies of that drawing that his sister did and then taking the time to distribute it, right? If you want to go a little bit bigger uh, and you want to talk about franchising, etc., then yeah, you know, now you're getting into some big numbers. Um, as many of you know, I own a franchise, right? It cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like this is my all in. If this fails, I fail, but I, I'm not going to fail. I'm already, I'm already set. So, um, but I had, I had to take that risk, right? I had to put my foot forward and not let fear dictate my decision and, and do this. So the wealth principle is again, in order to make money, you've got to spend money. Now here's, here's an, here's an interesting fact. Don't we have a choice every day? We do. We have a choice every day to spend money on entertainment and in unnecessary food maybe, or we can use the money to, to improve ourselves, right? To allow ourselves to grow intellectually. See what I'm saying? To gain knowledge. Okay, just think about that. All right, that is our Money Monday. Okay. Let's go ahead and now go into our application of our four principles of success. Um, <clears throat> we actually do several things to demonstrate the principle of success. Um, our primary actually is getting to platinum every season on Legends of Runeterra, which is very fun, by the way. I highly recommend it. Um, we just ended the season once again at platinum. Um, and, and then we switched over to one of our secondary goals, which is learning Japanese. Now, uh, as many of you may know, I do speak Spanish fluently. I can understand a little bit of French, Italian, speak a little bit of French, not much. Um, but, but I had no background in Far Eastern languages. And <clears throat> we're getting to a point where we can put some sen sentences together and understand things. And again, the, the point is just, just to show that anything you can put your mind to, you can do it if you follow our four rules, okay? So we're gonna turn the music off. Or is it already off? It's not off. All right, let's turn the music off. Um, <laughs> I have to find it. Where'd it go? Nope. Yes. There we go. Okay, good. All right. And I'm going to keep the headphones on now because I will need to hear the Japanese prompts. Where do I want to put it? Over here. Here we go. And we're going to change our view. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, as you can see, we've done quite a few modules. Okay, we're almost to the end of section two. So we've learned quite a bit, and we're learning more all the time. And this is not easy, by the way. This is completely foreign. And so every Monday, my goal is to review every single module that I've learned. Okay? And, and we'll do that for a few minutes here. And then maybe we'll have some fun. I don't know. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Okay, so this is your intro to the introduction to hiragana, right? Which is one form of Japanese writing. And this is just association, sounds with symbols, all right? So this is na. Na. This is n. Mm. This is i. I. This is ro. Ro. This is ku. Ku. You just have to know the association. That's it. I highly recommend Duolingo, by the way. Chi. Okay, 
chi. This is the symbol for chi. Okay, so e, e. ni, ni, chi. Chi. There we go. Na. Na. Na again. Here it is, because we know this is ku, ro, na, n. Na. O. O. O again. I, ku, o, ro. O. Seven should be na na, which is right here. Na na. There it is. Na na. Seven. Red. This should be aka. Aka. It is. Aka. So that's red. And for the third time, they really want us to know that. Seven is na na. Na na. I. I. Ah, that's san, right there. Right there. San. 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 San three. Three san for the third time. Oh wait. Yep. Not good. Ichi. Ichi is one. One ichi. One ichi. ichi. Okay. So, the point is that. Yay! We did it. Um. Okay. I don't want to click that. Oh. Okay. Whatever. I, the point is that we can do anything we set our mind to if we follow the four principles of success, of success right? That's it. We can do it. All right. I'm going to continue to this to do this for a little bit, and then we will call it a morning, and I'll be uploading this to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Ke. Ke. Ko. Ko. Ra. Ra. No. No. Te. Te. Ta. Ta. Ho. Wait, no, this is ho. That's mo. Or is that no? Ho. Ho. Ma. Ma. Mu. No. No. Suki. Suki, which means like, by the way. Suki. 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 Like. Kiru. 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 Uh, is that wind? Where? Want. A mai. No, that's sweet. Want. Kitanai. Kitanai. Dirty. Hoshi. Hoshi. I think Hoshi is it. It is. Hoshi. Hoshi. Where? Hoshi. Kiru. Kiru. That's Kiru. Be where? Yoru. 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 There we go. Hoshi. Hoshi is, we said, um, Want. Hoshi. Right. Correct. Want. Yomu. 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 Yoru. No, it's yoru. Where's yomu? Yomu. Okay, that's where, right? Read. Yoru. That's where. Yoru. No, yoru is yoru. night. She's. Yoru. Yoru. Night. Yomu. 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 Read. Dang it. Where? Kiru. Got it. Kiru. Read. Ki. No, read is yo. Mu. Yomu, right? Yomu. Yomu. Yeah. So close. Okay, so I think we're going to call it good for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I've helped you. I hope you've enjoyed the readings. 
the motivational quotes. Um, I am usually available Monday through Friday um, around 8.30ish a.m. Arizona Standard Time. Uh, and so feel free to join me anytime. I am also uploading this to my YouTube channel. In fact, let me go to my YouTube channel so I can tell you what that link is. And I should up, I'm, I'm going to link that uh, on my page too. Hold on. Uh, where's my channel? It is going to be, I don't know, actually, <laughs> if you look up Occam Razor, A.K.H. the number 4M Razor, you will find it. <laughs> How about that one? Uh, but I'm going to update that right now. And so if you've joined me today, thank you so much for, for joining me, for taking some time out of your day. I hope this has been uh, enjoyable for you. Um, for those who subscribe, again, I do have a Discord server that you can join, and you get that Discord for free and access to me throughout the day. Um, for any kind of motivational help or uh, just chatting. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, guys.